Naftal interface for Chevy Impala 2014-2019 demo on Chevy Tahoe. Hello, this demonstration is performed on Chevy Tahoe. However, please keep in mind, Buick, Chevrolet, Cadillac and GMC all share same electronics even though that fascia of the radio can look different. Buick, Intel Link, Chevy, My Link, Cadillac, Q and GMC, Intel Link use identical electronics in all cars. And so right on the back of that panel is where the radio module is. And then behind the glove box there's gonna be another module. So this is what we're going to be getting access to. So first we're going to get access to behind the glove box. You can open the glove box. You can remove the shrink. After the shrink is removed, we're going to show you the next step. You're going to flip the glove box down. Behind the glove box, you'll find an access panel. It has six screws. You got one, two, three, then four on the side. And then on top, you got two more screws. So altogether, six screws you got. And the screws are inside. The access panel is right there inside. Okay. So we're going to remove the access panel by removing six screws and gaining access to the interface. So we're going to take you now behind the glove box. Okay, so now that we're behind the glove box, we need to access this module right there. Behind the metal bar, you see this connector right there is the one that we need. This is the module. And the blue connector is the one we're going to interface right here. This is the one that we need. This is the one we're going to interface. All right, right there, the blue one, not the green one, but this blue one right here. So this is located inside the glove box. So the whole glove box, and then you go in, and behind the metal bar, right there. Yeah, that right there. This is the one you're going to access to connect part of the interface. After the glove box we need to access inside the armrest inside the center console. We need to take this whole panel out and gain access to the radio module. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to take out this whole panel so we can gain the access. We're gonna start working from back to front. So the console removal is going to start with removing under the dash panel right there. The under the dash panel is going to get removed. Then you're going to open the armrest and using a pry tool like this, you're going to work this panel from, from inside the glove box. The panel starts and goes all the way up and this clips all around. And that's how the panel is going to get removed. So first, we're going to remove the panel under the dash. So the panel is removed. So the way the panel comes out, you got two screws on the bottom and two screws on the side. So don't forget, you see right there, there's a screw right there and on the bottom. Don't forget to remove the side panel to access the two screws on the side, two screws on the bottom. The rest is just clips. Okay, now you will be able to open this panel. So you're going to pick this up. <laughs> and after you pick this up, we're going to work on removing the panel from top to bottom. From behind the glove box up, it just clips. And so now the panel is removed, okay? You can just set it on the side, the wires are long enough. Just set it on the side so you, this way you don't have to disconnect. And now, on the bottom right here, we got the radio module. So you got the gray connector right there, the one that you need. So we're gonna show it to you close up. So now that we're in the front here, let me show you. It's right here. You don't have to take anything more apart. This is the connector you need. The module we're showing you is a radio module. It is the same in all GM vehicles. Buick, Cadillac, Chevrolet, and GMC vehicles. You're seeing right now the connector that will be used for installation of both video in motion or in motion and video interface. However,
for in motion installation, no access behind glove box required. The audio connection is done from the interface to the car. There is no audio connection required directly from your smartphone. Audio and video is sent from smartphone either via wireless or HDMI connection. Then from the interface you will connect your audio to the audio jack inside your armrest or other location in your vehicle. We're going to show you the rest of the installation. Keep in mind, you can install up to four cameras. Left camera, right camera, both lane watch cameras, front view camera, and rear camera. If vehicle is equipped with factor rear view camera, no modification of the wiring is required. Left and right cameras turn on with the turn signals, and any of the cameras can also be automatically or manually turned on. Let's continue. For the purpose of installation, I removed the center panel, but I will show you that. See, we snake the wire. From there, it's gonna come out over here. And then we're gonna take another wire. That we're going to plug in into this wire here. And then we're going to do the same thing, we're going to snake it down there. So this way, we can install the interface somewhere in this vicinity. There's a lot of space over there. It's going to be much easier to do it this way. And the blue plug, we're going to plug it back into the interface. So now that we have the both cables installed, we can install the actual interface and attach it to the module inside the glove, behind the glove box. Now we're going to run the second wire. So now we're going to do behind the heater control, we're going to install this one and from behind the glove box, we're going to snake this cable and we're going to connect them together. Now we're going to install this piece right here. Now we're going to connect the extension harness to the main harness. Now it's time to test everything. Now on the passenger side we're going to hook everything up. Plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it in. How much the LED is blinking? This is status LED blinking. This is the HDMI when it's on. For now, we're just going to check the operation of the interface. So let's go to the screen. All we do is. We're going to press the back button and see if it switches or not. Give me a sec. So now let's check out the operation of the interface. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to press the back button. Hello. Let us show you the operation of this interface. It will show you smartphone mirroring that you can connect your iPhone or Android device and mirror to the car screen. There's also an option to connect Apple CarPlay, an option to connect front, rear, left and right lane watch cameras. We're first going to start with the rear camera as this vehicle is not equipped with one. If your car has rear camera, nothing else you need to do. So right there, you got rear camera. Now, from reverse, you put into drive what do you get right there? You got front camera. Front camera stays on until 10 miles an hour. So if we start driving, it's going to shut off right after 10 miles an hour. So right now I'm right at about five. All right, as you can see, and now I'm gonna start driving. 
10. That's it. That's all. Now, same thing we got the side cameras. Left camera. Cameras work at speeds over 10 miles an hour. So. Right camera, as you can see, and left camera, as you can see. And a right camera. You can also select any of the cameras manually. Press the back button and turn the wheel, and it's going to activate any of the cameras. So rear camera, front camera. Can see. How about left camera? Now right camera. So any of the cameras can be activated manually at any time or with turn signals. And the back button brings you back to the factory nav. And now I want to demonstrate the most interesting feature of the interface is smartphone mirroring. So we have Waze here. Waze has a very beautiful picture quality in this car. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on that screen completely. You can see the quality is top notch. This is we do everything that we do is is done in HD quality. This is an HD quality image. It's nothing like it anywhere. It's 100% true HD quality. So this is as good as it gets. It's not going to get any better. Now ways everybody obviously loves it you know you drive around and it's always on the screen you don't have to figure out where to put your phone it's always on the screen and at the same time you have ways with the Bluetooth streaming to your car or the auxiliary jack and listen to Pandora or any other radio or if you want your passengers to watch movies you can do that as well let me show you how to do this so just go into Netflix and uh, from Netflix I'm gonna switch to Netflix and so from Waze we're going to go to double tap that select Netflix and we're just gonna play the first movie that we have it's a little clip from the movie from Netflix and right now I'm on the LT network but as you can see quality is top notch everything is top notch and then you can see on your phone it says right there that playing on your TV screen so you can see it's mirroring the image if you want to switch back to your Netflix there you go you have the Netflix on your phone And the quality, I think, on the screen is better than on an iPhone. And then also, we'll go back to Netflix. Uh, okay, let's play this again. So, as long as you have internet, you can have a beautiful movie. I'm going to skip to the front. Look at this quality. Better than any home TV. Better than anything out there. Picture is amazing. Look at this crystal clear image. HD quality. It doesn't get better than that. Just on the top of the line. Just an action movie. Oops. Sorry for that picture. Play any movie. You're gonna have awesome picture quality. Some transporter right there for you. Look at this picture quality. HD image, HD picture quality. That's what it says. It's playing on your phone, but it's here. All the apps work the same way. 
on that looks you can actually shut your phone off so as you see the phone is off so you don't have to die about it anymore we can see. please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell let us know what we can do better for you